Uh, welcome uh, to all of you that are joining us on this question and answer session about the International Euphonium Tuba Festival 2020. Uh, we've got a, a collection of some of the staff, artists, and participants uh, tonight that are going to hopefully uh, provide some insights and answer some questions. Uh, my name is Adam Fry. I'm the artistic director and one of the teachers. Um, and obviously, with uh, the COVID-19 situation, uh, instead of being able to have a face-to-face -face conference, uh, we've been able to shift to something that's virtual. And this is something that's actually been very exciting uh, to me. Obviously, we would love to have the face-to-face -face, uh, conference, but that's not possible. So what we've instead done is created an amazing virtual conference uh, that's got more content. Uh, we're going to have more artists, uh, a lot of participant opportunities, uh, and sort of give a chance to have more international reach, uh, lower cost, uh, both in registration and that people aren't going to necessarily uh, have travel costs to get to Atlanta. And uh, we just want to involve as many people as possible. A um, couple interesting highlights that we want to tell you guys about. Uh, a lot of them are listed on the ietfestival.com website, uh, but we've got some information about technology, about the competitions, uh, about some of the artist announcements, hey, uh, which is great. Uh, and then also about some of the special series that are gonna happen. But I wanna take a second just to tell you a little bit about uh, some of the highlights this year. Uh, so of course, one of the big things that a lot of people have been asking is that IET is very intense. We've got a big schedule, uh, lots of classes most of the day, uh, but in the end, Everybody's going to be able to access the classes during the week of the IET festival, but also uh, you're going to be able to, to access recorded content up until August 1st. Uh, Mike Waddell and I, we've been working on a special platform and login uh, that's going to be available uh, so that if you've got a miss for work or a class or family obligation or the time zones don't work out exactly for you, uh, you're going to be able to access that. Uh, right now, uh, just I did a little bit of a, uh, of a, of a totals of classes uh, earlier today uh, that we're going to have more than 10 warm-up classes with the different artists, uh, over eight focus classes, which is actually uh, very specific topics. We're going to have four or five legends discussions, which I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that a little bit later. Uh, 10 plus master classes, and of course, you'll be able to have private lessons with all our faculty uh, and record those individually. Um, the other interesting thing uh, about the focus classes this year uh, is that it provides us an opportunity to really have a deep dive into a couple of different topics. Um, we're going to have some orchestral focus classes that are specifically targeting different styles, whether it be Wagner, Mahler, Bruckner. We're going to have a military band audition and an audition psychology panel, uh, body wellness, composing and arranging, and jazz improvisation. The other great thing about IET is about the connection that you're able to have with the different artists. And again, with it not being in person, we're going to try and have a number of informal chat rooms and hangouts uh, online uh, that provide us the opportunity for you to mix and mingle and, and talk with the different artists. Um, and so that's some of the, the details as far as an overview. Um, I wanted to uh, invite Mike Waddell uh, to tell us a little bit. Uh, he's sort of helping me spearhead the technology side of things and just wanted to have him tell you guys a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks, uh, thanks, Adam, for, for going over all that stuff and uh, introduction. I'm really excited about what we're doing from the tech side of things. I want to give you guys a little bit more specifics about some of the things that Adam was talking about. Um, and the number one thing from the technology side that we're trying to make make sure happens is that everything is really easy for everybody to use and that everybody has a really good experience and knows what they're getting into before the festival starts. And also throughout the week of the festival, should you run into any issues, that we help you through those in real time. Uh, so a couple things. One is we're going to have a couple people around the week before IET to have basically support. If you're not comfortable with Zoom, you've never used this before, and some of the other platforms that we're going to be using, uh, we can help get you set up one-on-one, -on -one, make sure you have everything ready to go for the week to start. And also, to that end, we're going to be sending out, I'm going to be sending out a detailed guide of uh, everything that you need to do to get set up. So you can read through that and then let us know if you have questions ahead of time 
so you're ready to go on day one. To that end, with all the technology uh, we're using, you know, occasionally there are technical mishaps in the middle of things. Uh, we'll be available for sort of live chats and phone support throughout the week as well. So if you run into issues, you have a problem, um, we can get you back up and running as quickly as possible. The other great thing too, is if you run into an issue, say, uh, you know, your internet goes out, which we can't necessarily fix on our end, uh, and you miss a couple warm-up classes, the great thing is that that stuff is all going to be archived. You can go and check it out later um, if you do miss something for any technical reason. And talk a little bit about that archival process. Uh, it's going to be very um, thorough. So everything, all of the warm-up classes, all of the focus classes, everything that uh, Adam just talked about, is all going to be archived on a platform that you're going to log into. So you'll be given login information with your email. After the festival, you can go ahead and log in. You can search through all that content. It's not just going to be like one big video of IET. You can click warm up classes. You'll get a list of artists. You can go through, pick everything. Um, say you went to uh, Mark Jenkins' warm up class and it happened to be the same time as Adam Fry's warm up class, but you still wanted to see Adam Fry's warm up class. You can go see that after the fact. You'll have access to everything. Um, if you think if you've been to IET in the past, you know that often we have two things going on at once. So this enables you to see both of those things after the fact and get everything where you may have had to choose, pick and choose before. Um, so that's a really exciting thing. It's going to be um, archived, all the videos. Also, your private lessons will be recorded um, and sent to you. You'll be able to download those and keep those uh, long term as well. Yeah, you can chime in on. Yeah, so uh, one of the things I was going to say, I was actually just doing a little bit of math in my head uh, when you said oh, it's not just going to be one big long video. Um, I think yeah. that on a daily basis between uh, the classes will start, there's actually on the <coughs> IET website, there's sort of a rough guide that we're going to start at 10 o'clock in the morning uh, with a 45 minute warm up class. There'll be a euphonium warm up class and a tuba warm up class. At 11 o'clock, we'll have a one hour master class, again, a euphonium track and a tuba track. Uh, we'll have a break in coffee talk at 12. One o'clock will be our focus class. Again, that there'll be two choices happening there. 2 p.m. will be our legends discussion. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a break. Four o'clock is a master class. Uh, again, a euphonium and tuba choice. 5 p.m. we'll have a break. Uh, at 6 p.m., I put this because I, I went to a Southeastern Southeastern Conference School, uh, that we should have a tailgate informal chat before the main event at 730, and then the evening recital. Uh, but the funny thing is, I think, so that would be two, four, six, eight, uh, 10, about 11 hours of content, 12 hours of content each day times six days. Uh, so anyway, if we did put it all in one long video, that would actually be really funny. Uh, but it would be like 70 plus hours. That would be super impressive for a variety of different reasons. Um, Mike, did you want to talk about some of the technology stuff that we're recommending? Again, this is on the FAQ uh, to maximize people's events mm -hmm. and experience. Yeah, a couple of things uh, for sure. So the one thing is you're going to want to check your internet speed as well, um, that you're going to want to make sure you have at least a 10 megabit per second download speed. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. Um, we can help you out with that. Uh, but basically, uh, check with your internet provider. And if it is slower than that, it doesn't mean that you can't participate in IET. It just means that the video quality you see might be a little bit lower. Um, but the great thing is it won't be when you view it later. Uh, but also, if your internet speed is particularly slower than that by quite a bit, um, you might want to reach out to your internet provider and see if you can up the speed even for just the week. I know a lot of internet providers with everything going on right now are providing uh, solutions for people to be able to to use these these types of services um, either free of charge or at discounted rates. Also, uh, the use of microphones. You know, if you uh, right now I'm just using my my iPad microphone, which is fine for talking, but if I started playing my euphonium, it would sound a little bit uh, it would sound less than ideal. Um, so we're going to put together. I have a list of suggested based on your platform, whether you're going to be using an iOS device, an iPhone or an iPad, you can do everything on there, an Android device or a computer, all are going to work perfectly fine for what we're doing at IET, whatever your preference is. Uh, and I have a list of suggested microphones that are under $100 for iOS, things that work with Android and for your computer and different price points. So if you want to get something, you know, 
the 50 or $60 that's going to make things, will make things infinitely better. Um, we'll have information on that. If you want to spend more money, uh, I'll have information on sort of different tiers up to three or $400 of equipment and what we'd, we'd recommend um, and, and all that good stuff. So yeah, you can see, I don't have my stuff plugged in, but it's, there's things. Um, so what microphones, everything from low cost to medium to higher cost. Yeah, there, there's all sorts of options, but even just spending 50 bucks and getting one of these, say low end, but it's, it's still really nice pieces of equipment, especially if you're gonna be doing private lessons. Yeah, that's exactly one of them. The IQ Zoom IQ7, which is $99 on Amazon right now, um, which is great for um, iOS devices, for iPhones and iPads that it's going to make things infinitely better, especially if you're playing, going to be playing in a private lesson or playing um, in a master class. And also there's some features in the various platforms. I'll talk about Zoom because that's where we are um, to do to enable that, to disable sound compression, to make sure that your sound comes across as best as possible through the internet. So we'll be putting all that stuff together and sending it out uh, to everybody who's registered and helping you get in touch with the resources that you need. Don't worry if you, you know, you want to do IET and um, you're, you're planning on spending the money for IET and you can't spend anything else to get another microphone, you'll still be able to participate, but we'll have a list of recommendations at all price points to, to try to make the experience better for you and also give you a tool that you can use long term for other ventures. Cool. That's great. Lots of good information there. Yeah, I think the main thing is, I know a lot of people get concerned about technology and issues and stuff like that, but we're really trying to give everybody recommended uh, settings, hardware to make sure that it's a really good, high quality experience for them. Uh, we definitely do not want it to be a, a low quality experience, and it's not going to be. Now, one of the other aspects uh, about this year is that we decided that we wanted to keep the competitions. Now, the competitions at IET are, are quite different from some of the other festivals and stuff uh, in conferences. Ours is very educationally based. Uh, we give comments. Uh, you're actually able to have lessons with some of the judges during the week of IET, which is, you know, uh, for most competitions, that's a crazy thought. But our goal isn't about sort of like the competition itself. It's about the experience and the improvement. And uh, it's a really neat thing to hear someone play on the first round uh, to maybe potentially teach them in a master class or in a private lesson, uh, and then hear them later in the week in the finals and just see how much improvement there is. Most of the time with the competition, you sort of are all stuck with all your individual work beforehand. Now, things have changed a little bit this year, obviously, because of the, the virtual conference, but I wanted to invite one of our guest artists and uh, uh, to, to tell us just a little bit about those changes. So I'd like to welcome Jason Casanova to tell us about the competitions. Hey, everybody. Can everybody hear me all right? Yeah? All right, good. So um, new changes about the competition this year. Um, you know, as Adam said, that it's all very uh, educational based. Okay, but the, the, the new thing, obviously, just like, like the festival, going digital, right? Full on digital. So um, just like any other year, you're gonna have to pay an entry fee for the competition. It's gonna be $35 and that's due on June 1st, okay? So that competition application fee gets you into the competition. And mind you, we are expanding the competitions this year. So it's not only the solo euphonium you know the young artist uh and student levels etc we also have uh the mock band auditions for tuba mock band auditions for euphonium and we will also have mock orchestral auditions for tuba as well okay so whichever competition you want to enter that'll be 35 dollars to enter the competition okay so how is that going to work typically during the festival you know, you come in, you fly in a little bit early, you, you do the first round, you get judged, you get your comments. Uh, obviously, we can't do that this year. <laughs> um, so what's going to end up happening is you will submit either a video or audio recording of yourself performing the repertoire that is required for the competitions that you select. Uh, that that uh, your submissions for the first round will be graded, okay, and they will be judged, and we will 
pick you know the the finalists for said competition okay um now you will get comments you will get um you will be able to have lessons after, you know, the first round, et cetera. Uh, the second round will take place at a later time during the week. I believe, um, uh, I, I think we said maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Is that correct, Adam? Thursday. Thursday, okay. Be able to submit. That gives them a little bit more time to have some educational experiences during the, the first couple of days of the festival. Yes. So you'll be able to have lessons on the music. So, you know, there's a lot of questions about that. Some people worry, you'll be able to have that. Okay. Um, and uh, the prizes you'll get <clears throat> for the artists and solo divisions, you have $300 cash, $200 scholarship to IET for first prize, $150 cash, and $100 scholarship to the IET festival second prize. Okay. For the amateur solo division, you'll have $100 gift card for euphonium.com and a $100 scholarship to the IET festival. And for the mock auditions, whether it be orchestral or band, first prize will get $200 cash and a $200 scholarship for IET. Second prize will get $125 cash and $100 scholarship to IET Festival. Um, and that will either be sent through, I guess, electronic means such as maybe Venmo, PayPal, uh, something like that. Okay. Western Union. Western Union, carrier pigeon. <laughs> right um exactly. by by horseback maybe um yeah so um and as mike waddell said earlier uh in order to get the best results for these competitions it's highly recommended that you get an external microphone of whatever kind i've seen a lot of microphones uh some people choose to use the uh blue snowball microphone it's a little tripod microphone you can get online on amazon for like 49 dollars um, some people choose to go with the, uh, let me see if I can grab it here, the Zoom microphone like this. Uh, I teach plenty of lessons and some of my students, uh, plenty of my students have this kind of a microphone. Obviously, this one's from like 10 years ago, so you might want to get a new updated one. But <laughs> if not, it's not the end of the world. It'll still work. Mine still works great. Um, but something like that uh, will help out greatly. Um, you could use the you know the the microphone in your phone or your ipad or whatever but uh i i feel that you will get the best recording if you use an external microphone and mike waddell also uh said that earlier as well um so i mean even if you spend a little bit of money uh you know for a for a less expensive microphone that'll help out a lot okay um let me see great adam any other questions or no, I think, I think uh, one thing for the finals, uh, you know, we want people, we're going to be able to provide some smart music files uh, for that. I know some people asked about that. Uh, we'll have some piano accompaniment tracks, but of course, they're going to be ones that we create. Uh, my best recommendation for people is uh, you can use the smart music files that we've got for some of the music some of our pianists uh, provide. Um, but if you've got a local pianist or somebody that you've worked with and you have the opportunity to chat with them and collaborate with them, uh, I think that's going to be your best bet to make sure that it has the nuances that you want and stuff. And we'll have more information on that um, uh, uh, in, the, in the next week or so. Now, one of the other really cool things is that we've been able to expand the solo competition. You know, one of the things in planning this this event for virtual is that it provides some unique opportunities. And so uh, I'm really excited that we're adding, uh, this is phase one, there could be phase two and potentially phase three uh, if registration numbers uh, get high enough, but phase one of adding some new artists and these uh, expanded solo competitions include a mock band competition for euphonium and tuba, and then also a mock orchestra audition that we're very excited about. So we hope a lot of you that were preparing for regional ITA conferences uh, in different auditions for summer festivals uh, that you guys will be able to take a look at those uh, and take part and, and see what it's like and then also be able to study with some of these amazing teachers. Um, as of today, I'm very pleased to, to announce that we've got four new teachers that are going to be involved uh, in this phase one of our faculty expansion. Uh, Jean Picorni is going to be joining us, which is very exciting. Uh, Aaron Tindall, 
uh, and then Mark Jenkins and Simon Wildman from the U.S. Marine Band. And uh, I wanted to invite Mark uh, to tell us just a little bit. Uh, he's been helping me uh, select the pieces for the mock band competitions and just a little bit about his responsibilities there. Mark has been to IET, I think about three, maybe four times over the years. Something like that. Uh, and as someone that I've known for a long time, great friend, phenomenal player, his new excerpt CD is absolutely fantastic and a mainstay for euphonium players. And so I just wanted to invite Mark just to say a couple words. Yeah, thanks. Can everyone hear me okay? Uh, so yeah, Adam wanted me to have, come on here and just uh, talk about the audition process and I'll, also a little bit about the uh, master class slash panel discussion we're going to be having on audition prep, uh, which I'll also be involved in. Um, as he said, my, my colleague from the Marine Band, Simon Wildman, who's one of our tubists, uh, and I are going to be uh, involved with the Euphonium mock audition and the tuba mock band audition. Uh, we've we've chosen repertoire. I think Jason touched on this that has already been has already shown up on past conferences, regional conferences. So if you were going to go to a conference and it got canceled because of this COVID situation, and you've already got the excerpts learned or in the bag, then you're already ahead of the curve. So uh, take some time and get them worked up. And I, I highly encourage you, anyone who's thinking about taking professional auditions or who just wants to get better at auditions, whether it's at a college level at this point or some other audition. Uh, one of the keys is to take as many as you possibly can, even if they're mock auditions. Uh, so obviously that standard will still be in place on this panel. Uh, but again, I encourage everyone who, who was going to take part and those who were thinking about it but didn't do it uh, in terms of the regional conferences to go ahead and, and sign up for this competition and, and send in your recordings. Uh, I think we did say it was going to be two recorded rounds and um, we'll obviously be offering you comments, both uh, I'm sure recorded as well as, as live comments on those. The, the panel that we're going to be discussing uh, or that we're going to be talking about uh, in terms of audition technique, uh, I just jotted down a, a few different areas that we're going to be hitting on that I think are really important for students to think about when they're preparing for auditions in terms of practice techniques, uh, mental preparation, tips for, for surviving the day of an audition, uh, musical ideas in terms of how to interpret excerpts the way the panel is expecting them to be played, and just observations in general that, that myself and my colleagues who will be on the panel have, have been able to garner over many years and many, many professional auditions being on many panels. So I think uh, it'll be a, r a real educational event for all those who decide to participate and we're really looking forward to it. So uh, anyway, hope you guys can come out for both uh, competitions. And uh, if there's any questions, uh, let me know or, or shoot Adam an email and he can forward it to me. Thanks. Yeah, no, those are great points, Mark. And yeah, I think I think that's one of the great things is be is being able to get that clear feedback. You know, in a lot of the main auditions, you know, you show up, you play, maybe you don't make it past the first round, and you might ask the orchestral committee or the uh, or the competition committee for feedback. And sometimes it's difficult to get that. But the really cool thing is, depending on how things happen, uh, you know, you could very much end up having a private lesson with Mark. It specifically, uh, and if you did the mock euphonium band competition, you'd be able to spend your lesson uh, really talking through the comments, drilling through those etudes. So it's a it's a really unique experience. And for those of you that are really gung ho, uh, you are allowed to do multiple competitions. So I know we actually already have people that are signed up to do both the euphonium uh, solo competition and the mock euphonium band competition. Uh, we've got one gung-ho tuba player who signed up for orchestra, mock band, and the solo competition. Good luck. And uh, so that's sort of a, a neat thing. Um, but yeah, and there's tips on the website about, uh, yeah, it's $35 per competition uh, for the entrance fee. Uh, and then also just to know there's some tips about what uh, for how to record, uh, mic placement, things. We really want to help everybody understand how to produce their best version of themselves. Now, the competition is one of the unique things about being participant focused. And over the uh, 16 years that we've had the IET, comp uh, the IET festival, uh, we've always tried to have the idea of making it participant focused. We've got these amazing teachers and artists that are here, but we try and connect with them, uh, connect with the participants, and also give them the opportunity to play a lot. 
not just to watch the teachers, but to play, whether it's in uh, the virtual ensemble this year, but our big masked ensemble. If you've ever visited our, visited our YouTube channel, you'll see Game of Thrones or the Vidor Toccata, different things like that for 125 tubas and euphoniums, which is uh, pretty amazing and stuff. Um, so, but I wanted to invite uh, one of our uh, participants, uh, started out as a participant many years ago. Uh, he's uh, a work study and has helped with a lot of different things, managing library and logistics. Uh, and he just finished uh, his master's degree at Indiana University. And I just wanted him to maybe share just a couple comments about his experience. Uh, so I wanted to welcome Andrew Salee uh, to tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, hi, can you guys hear me? Oh, great. Yeah, um, yeah, there are a lot of really amazing opportunities that they have at IET every year. Playing in the mass ensemble is an experience like few others. You won't find that very many other places. Can you still hear me a little louder? Okay. Yeah, I think one of the most exciting things about IET for me personally is the opportunity to take private lessons and participate in master classes with some of the most renowned artists in the world. Uh, and for a fraction of the cost that you might pay outside of a festival. Um, you can literally pay hundreds of dollars for a single one-on-one -on -one session with some of these artists that come to, to teach at this festival. And um, the cost of one individual lesson is far, it's very much worth the information that you're sure to receive when you're doing that. Uh, some of the lessons that I've taken as a partic partic participant at IET have uh, helped me to determine which schools I wanted to audition for, what graduate programs I wanted to look into. And uh, the fact that I'd already had at least one face-to-face -face interaction with some of the professors I auditioned for, it uh, really made the audition process that much less nerve wracking. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Another amazing opportunity that you have when you come to IET is that you get to really interact with all the guest artists that come. Uh, one of the most sh shocking revelations I had when I first started attending converse, conferences and festivals, IET included, was uh, that all these artists that I, that we have listened to and idolized for years are actually people who uh, love music just like you and just like me. Um, the laid back nature of the festival really makes it easy to interact with them and uh, have real conversations with them. But you may not really easily have at other events. I remember the first year I attended IET, Dr. Fry actually just walked right up to me and uh, struck up a conversation. Needless to say, I was a, a little shocked. <laughs> well, that and then uh, one thing we we used to do, although it won't happen this year, uh, is a ice cream social in the early years at my house. Um, but as the camp got larger, it was sort of impossible to do that. But I know there's a certain gentleman on our faculty that has an affinity for ice cream, uh, Mr. Brian Bohm, Dr. Brian Bowman. Uh, so anyway, I had the idea maybe this year we'll, we'll tell everybody to get ice cream and we'll have an ice cream social online. Yeah, I love that idea. It's amazing. Um, yeah, as I was saying, as someone who is uh, working towards building my own career in the world of music, I'm really fortunate to have been given the opportunity to network and build relationships with artists from around the world, as I'm sure anybody who has similar goals as me would be or just anybody who loves music. Now, uh, in terms of also, also building relationships, I believe that one of the most special and most important aspects of attending IET is the opportunity to meet and become friends with all of the fellow participants. Uh, through my time participating at IET, I've really developed meaningful friendships with my fellow staff members, other participants. A small group of us actually made a group chat on Facebook after, I think, my first year when I attended, and we still talk almost every single day. Um, especially now that we're all stuck inside all the time. Uh, we've actually had a lot of fun doing recording projects together over the past several weeks. And uh, really at the end of the day, if it wasn't for my time spent at IET, I wouldn't have all these really wonderful people in my life keeping me sane. So yeah. Yeah, and I think, uh, believe it or not, even for the artist, I think um, we, we love to get together as well and it'd be a little bit of a, it's a hard work because we've got a lot of teaching to do during the week, uh, but it's a lot of fun and it's great to see our friends, um, whether it's Yuka Mulis or, or Thomas Rudy, uh, all the different people. I mean, it's a, it's a really, really uh, great experience to be able to have. 
And this level of camaraderie, whether it's at the artist level or at the college level, or if you're a high school student and you want to talk with different college students about, hey, what do I need to know about really picking a college for my music degree? Uh, because it's, it's a little bit more complicated than just picking it based on, you know, uh, a variety of different factors. It's really good to find out what is really happening uh, there and stuff. So brainstorming. So uh, I like to, to, to think about lots of different things and what's possible. You know, uh, lots of people uh, through my life have, have told me lots of things about what's not possible and what is possible. Uh, but I, I like to think of myself as the naive optimist. And, uh, and I like to surround myself with people that, that think of, of, of exciting things. And so um, last summer, I was in Colorado playing in Steamboat Springs. Uh, and uh, also made a trip over to Aspen, uh, where one of my friends conducts a Fourth of July concert. Uh, and uh, Warren Deck teaches at the Aspen Music Festival. And um, I called up Warren and said, hey, uh, let's try and uh, meet up for dinner. Uh, so Warren, his wife, and I, we had a, a great uh, dinner at a little Italian uh, restaurant downtown in Aspen. And it was fantastic. And um, he and I, we were talking about, you know, just about, you know, what what do we need? What do what do students need? What are they not getting? Uh, and we we just sort of had a had a good chat about you know sharing stories. So Warren, I don't know if you want to tell them a little bit about this thing uh, called the Legend series and sort of how this sort of came up. Well, you know, I, I just I just wondered if we could put um, folks together, you know, to to share, you know, like geezers, you know. Who, who've been around a while and you know super experienced can... people not geezers super experienced <laughs> well, okay okay experience and a geezer so yeah um no but but you know to share to share common common well i mean just to share stories and find common elements that 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 sort of would arise from from you know their experiences um, and you know, my thoughts, my thoughts are that it probably needs to be moderated, you know, by, by somebody and, and my thoughts about what the moderator would be charged with would be to make sure that, that, that the session doesn't veer off into some, you know, fishtail, you know, like, like, like I sent on my video, you know, you know, like it's I like caught the note this big. Yeah. Yeah. You know that, that that kind of thing. You know that that it that it that it if it does uh, devolve off into a story, that there's a point to the story that 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 illustrates you know uh, the the lesson to be to be learned, you know, or or, or the lesson that somebody's trying to impart, mm -hmm. and and to ask you know these quote legends. Well, you know, exclude me from that, but the rest of the people I view as legends, um, you know, to ask them, you know you were able to do this. How did you learn that? Who taught you, you know, what was the mindset behind it? What, you know, what was the process by which you learned this stuff? And, and, you know, and, and what was it like for you to, to learn that? So, so that that information gets imparted to, to folks with less experience rather than, you know, I once caught a note this big, you know? So, you know, th those are my, those are my thoughts that, that it probably needs to be moderated. Adam, I don't know how many how many sessions you're thinking about, and how many people it would be the the optimal number of people to put together in one group. I'm thinking no more than four. You know? Yeah. No. So uh, what's been really amazing is is the response on this, and we've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight uh, tuba legends confirmed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, eight. Uh, euphonium legends and we we're also working they're not confirmed yet uh but we're going to have uh also one of these uh discussions that's specifically dedicated to female legends both past and present within our euphonium and tuba field um but yeah no we're definitely going to have a moderator uh and uh maybe potentially a, a time clock just in case to keep some people on track and stuff like that yep but it's uh it's really exciting i think to put you know, tubas are solitary in the orchestra. 
uh, and uh, you know uh, when they get the chance. Like uh, I remember uh, the the recording project that you guys did with Canadian Brass, uh, Red, White, and Brass, wasn't it? Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We we did four of those, you know, and it was it was always, you know, it it was, you know, Chuck I've I've known since 1982, so you know to to get that, and, and we did a lot of stuff with just the two of them. But then, you know, when you threw the Boston Symphony guys in there too, and, and I, I got to sit there and sit next to and play with Chester, it was, for me, it was heaven. It was just, it was like, wow, you know? And it, what was really gratifying was he felt the same way and, and expressed it. So, so I mean, we had, a, we had a fantastic time, you know, just playing together because it's not something we normally get to do. So it's, it's a big deal playing together. And, and I think really when you can get a couple of folks you know, talking about, you know, commonalities. The thing about the thing about the time with Chester that astonished me was how much he and I thought musically alike, having never studied with the same people, having never played in the same ensemble together, yet there, there was still a lot of musical values that we held dear that, that, were, that were, you know, true to both of us. And, and I found that really interesting. That, that you know people who come from two different worlds there there's there's so much commonality in in the thinking uh and yeah. and i i think that's what we would find when we start putting these people from from different worlds together there you know there, there are going to be some some roaring things like you know great time great pitch you know think ideas about phrasing you know ideas about you know musical forward motion you know th those kinds of things you, uh, they're they're, they're going to come out and I think there's a, there's, there's a really good amount of information in there for folks to be able to take away from that. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And, and I hope that they're going to share a little bit about stories about their teachers from a historical perspective. Um, maybe I think we'll have a couple of people talk a little bit about early history of TUBA um, and, and just different things like that. No, I'm, I'm really excited that, uh, uh, a number of people that have responded positively, like uh, Roger Bobo, Floyd Cooley, Gene Picorni and yourself, Wes Jacobs, Jim Self, Dan Parentoni, and Winston Morris, just to name a couple. And then uh, Brian Bowman, uh, Dave Worden, Steve Mead, Paul Drossi, Luke Spiros, uh, Mike Colburn. So we'll have a good U.S. Uh, Marine uh, Band contingent there as well. And like I was saying, we're also uh, finalizing the, the members for the, uh, for the female legends past and present. As well. Yeah, it's the 100th anniversary um, so yeah. of suffrage. So it's the time to do it. Oh, great. Yeah. No, I think it's a, it's, it's a really neat thing. And that's going to be a, a, a primary focus uh, that I think we're going to be really, really uh, excited about what we hear and the opportunities there. So Warren, thank you very much for, uh, for uh, sharing that with us. And I wanted to let you know, I played golf with my dad on Friday. I got two pars and a birdie. All I right. Had played, I had not played for seven and a half months. Uh, I did when my father, he likes to bet and my brother-in-law, they like to bet on the golf course and stuff like that. Kids, you should not wager. Um, but anyway, I won 36 bucks. I got to tell you, I've not won money off my dad and my brother-in-law in golf in a long time. So, anyway, so it felt good, but I look forward to, uh, so you uh, only need to golf. play it once every seven and a half months. Uh, that's potentially true as a matter of fact, <laughs> very true. Very just true. like practicing. <laughs> no, 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 no. So well. cool. Uh, one of the other things that I wanted to uh, tell you guys a little bit about is that uh, Brian Dowdy has been an amazing supporter of, of the IET Festival uh, for many, many years. Uh, Cimarron Music Press, he's also responsible for Tube Euphonium Press. Uh, he's a, a great friend of mine, uh, highly intelligent. He actually just got elected to the school board in, uh, I think, New London, Connecticut. And, um, and we were talking about how we can try and do good things uh, for the participants. And, um, and so, one of the things that you'll notice on the website is that uh, for full week registration, we're actually offering $100 in music credits uh, that you can use uh, on the Cimarron uh, music uh, publications off of um, uh, uh, Pinnacle Brass uh, and then also euphonium.com publications. 
And so this is just sort of like an added incentive for, for people to get a more complete experience of number one, uh, being able to be part of the festival, but then also go away with some new music uh, that they've experienced during that during the week and stuff. Um, the other thing uh, that Jason and I uh, discussed uh, with the euphonium.com store uh, is one of our stretch goals is that we want to mail everybody t-shirts, uh, which is going to be great. And uh, we're going to offer everybody that uh, if you order music off the euphonium.com store during the week, of course, you won't be able to browse uh, like at the conference, um, but you'll be able to do some shopping online. Uh, and then we'll actually give everybody uh, free shipping uh, for domestic orders in the U.S. Uh, and then we're going to do substantially discounted shipping for international participants and stuff like that. I wish the U.S. postal system and, and shipping was a little bit less, but uh, it is what it is. Um, other things that I think, oh, wanted to tell you a little bit about, again, participant focus. So we're going to do the virtual mast ensemble this year, and this is basically going to be where uh, we're going to send out the music uh, in a test file. By the way, I've got at least two special guest conductors. Mike Colburn is one of them. Uh, the other one, it can't be released yet, uh, but uh, uh, we're going to have a mast ensemble. We're going to make a, an audio re a video recording of that. Uh, I'll have some of the work studies and helpers. Uh, make a, 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 a guide track, uh, and then uh, people will upload their videos uh, by the start of the festival, uh, June 10th, actually, I think, uh, and then we're going to have a couple video editors combine all those uh, performances of the repertoire, and those are going to be broadcast at the gala concert, just like if you were here during the week, that it would be broadcast at that particular point in time. The other neat thing, if you happen to be a jazz player, uh, we are going to have a jazz night, uh, Gail Robertson is going to be one of our uh, featured artists. She's also going to be teaching a class on jazz improvisation uh, during the week. And so what's going to be offered, uh, we'll have the tune shortly, uh, but we're going to let people upload 16 bars, uh, or if it's really good, maybe 32. We might just edit you down. Uh, but uh, that you'll be able to uh, upload a video, and uh, we're going to put that together. Uh, because this is one of the things that we've done in the past on the jazz nights is we've allowed participants to do a little, take a little ride on, on a tune and stuff like that. Uh, so we'll put everybody together uh, and make that sort of like you're almost uh, here in Atlanta and stuff like that. Um, let's see about some other notes that I, that I uh, talked about. Small group chats uh, in, in breakout rooms, we're definitely going to be able to do lots of question and answer. We're going to send out a lot of PDFs of the warm-up classes and some of the focus classes. We'll also have some handouts that uh, basically everybody will be able to uh, have access to. Um, and um, yeah, Bobby, did we have some specific questions that we didn't uh, address so far, or some new things coming in? Um, I don't see anything in particular coming in. Uh, if you if you are if you have any additional questions, please um, comment here or send them to us afterwards. I can get back to you. Um, uh, one thing that did come in the other day, um, and this might be a question for Mike. Um, I know you talked about technology a little bit. Is the platform available on tablets, phones, computers, all around, or is it just a computer type of thing? Yep. Yeah. You can use any, pretty much any mobile device or a computer. So if you want to use a computer, great. If you want to use an iPhone, like any iOS device or Android, any smartphone or tablet, it's all, it's all universal. Everything we're using will be accessible on anything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, no flip phones, say, but yeah. Yeah. A couple of things I'm just going to uh, advise people of uh, is that number one, if you can a be close to the Wi-Fi router or run an ethernet cable, I know that's old school, but it provides really fast service. The other thing, most uh, Wi-Fi modems and routers have uh, interesting settings uh, that you can go into the admin screen and you can actually prioritize devices and throttle down other devices. 
I'm not saying that you should figure out how to do this and make sure that your little brother or sisters or parents, uh, iPhones or devices uh, actually, you know, like get less bandwidth than yours, but that would actually probably be a, a really good idea if you actually know how to do that. Not that that occurs in my house at all. Maybe, just so you know. Um, other things. Um, another question that we had, um, I know we spoke about moderating the chats when, when there's mm -hmm. time playing. Um, is it, are, are, the question came in um, as, are, are the participants, participants going to be able to video chat such as we are now, or is it just a text-based chat with the artists? It will depend on the event. So we're looking at a number of different things for different events, but there will be opportunities to video chat for sure. Um, there may be some things that are confined to text chat, but we're looking at a number of different um, and testing a number of different things for the different types of events. Um, just you know, to figure out what makes the most sense for each thing. It might be different for a warm up class than it is for a master class than it is for um, like a more informal Q and A session. Yeah, the biggest challenge technology wise isn't having the technology for us to do video chat. Uh, I mean, that's an awesome thing. Uh, the problem is with bandwidth and how that affects everybody's experience and stuff. So uh, the main thing is, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of text chats, especially like in the large groups and stuff like that. And, uh, and then uh, I hope, uh, I'm not 100% certain about this, but I hope that in some of the breakout rooms, uh, in sort of the small group conference rooms uh, that it'll be able to be video chat. Um, but really a lot of that has so much to do with uh, what your individual uh, bandwidth is like and what Mike was talking about, your your down download and upload speed. Uh, there's a great uh, website called speedtest.net. Uh, and this is something where you can actually do an internet test to see what your upload download speed is. And then uh, I actually uh, checked with my internet provider uh, uh, specifically about IET. Uh, and anyway, it was just going to be $15 a month more for me to bump up to the next uh, speed level. I think it went to 100 megabit or something like that. So I hope that that's not going to cause it. 100 megabits. Mike, should I be fine with 100 megabit? Yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll, okay. be, you'll be 10x ten, ten fine. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So uh, even though that that might seem silly, uh, just to check into something, check into something like that, I think is uh, important to be able to to do. Okay. Uh, other questions. I saw that er, Terry Pontinen, uh commented about geezers on the uh, the thing. Uh, those of you that don't know, are we generally have quite a large uh, collection of adult players. I think that's one of the great things about IET is that we've got uh, both uh, high school students, college students, and adult students, and um, adult students, uh, they're older than me. Uh, but they have a great time really learning about what's, what's happening. And uh, that's why we have the adult solo competition. So they have something to get excited about and sort of, uh, I like to see them wish each other good luck backstage and everything like that. Everybody's hoping that everybody does well, uh, which is which is a great thing. Cool. Yes. Bobby, other questions? Yeah, we, we actually, um, speaking of, um, we have a question just came in on Facebook. It says, how will lessons work? I'm, I'm guessing this has to do with um, how the, what the individual students will be able to connect with the individual artists. Yeah, so like the, the platform. Things, um, yeah, what is sorry, about sorry, the technology Adam. side of things, and then I'll talk about the scheduling of things. Okay. Sure. Um, so lessons will be will be via Zoom, and uh, you know, essentially like this, but there'll be specific rooms for individual lessons. So you'll receive um, basically a link for your lesson to say go to Mark Jenkins lesson zoom room and you'll click on that and you'll connect with him for the length of your lesson and that'll be recorded uh, on our end we'll be recording all of the lessons 
Netherlands, and we will be sending out a link what it, 10 times it takes with so many things a day or so for Zoom to process all those recordings. You'll basically receive a link that you can then after the fact go to and download a copy of, uh, of the recording to sort of save and reference later. Yeah, and That's I think the it's actually also it. possible for them to, to save it themselves. And then the, the really cool thing about IET, I think something that we've worked over the years is to make the lesson process as smooth as it can be. I think last year we scheduled 216 private lessons. And I think, I think maybe like 48 or 49 master classes. So uh, it's, it's a big, big ordeal to make sure that everything is moving exactly where it should be. Uh, but that's a really nice experience that basically there's not a, a big situation of, oh, I'd like to have a lesson. Oh, how much do you charge? Oh, when can we do it? Oh, that's not a good time for me. You know, we have our artists. We know what their schedules are like. We know what your schedules are like. Uh, and then we sort of block those in. Actually, one of the great things this year is that because everything is going to be video archived, uh, is that, you know, if you have to miss something, uh, then you've got a clear video archive. You don't have to ask somebody else at, at Chick-fil-A lunch, hey, what happened in Brian Bowman's master class and things like that. So, so that's a good question. Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions here. Okay. Uh, unless anyone else has any other thoughts. Yeah. Does anybody have anything else that they want to add uh, all the way down the line? So I have a quick question. So what sets this apart from the typical other, maybe, you know, things that are going on during the summer that are just Zoom, you know, meetings and what? Yeah, I mean, for me as artistic director, I, I think that, you know, being able to have the connection with the quantity of artists, you know, just not a, a couple of artists. I mean, we've got 14 plus the new four. Uh, we're up to 18 artists plus all the legends uh, that we're going to have, which will probably actually number uh, at the end of the day, probably about uh, 17 to 18 of them. Um, I would highly encourage people that the more registrations, I actually have a phase two plan of, of additional faculty that I want to add, um, but I've got to be able to have uh, basically uh, the numbers to make the budget work and stuff like that. So there's a lot of exciting things that, that can happen, but the quantity of artists, the quantity of content is just unmatched. Like we were talking about with Mike, with the one long video of, you know, 70 plus hours of content that you'll be able to digest uh, in, in, in work. I think the other thing is also about the focus on euphonium and tuba specifics. You know, I mean, it's obviously great to do brass things and stuff like that, but you know, there's, there's specifics that are there in the intricacies that go along with that. The virtual ensemble, I know that there's a lot of different conferences and festivals that are more about people watching content. And we can't necessarily have the same interaction like we normally have during IET. Uh, but with the virtual ensemble, uh, the virtual jazz, uh, the competitions, the private lessons, the master class, uh, all the different Q&A with the legends and uh, the, the warm-up classes, focus classes and stuff. I think the interaction is, is going to be really certainly uh, amazing. Um, and then the final thing that I would say is that the variety of concepts, you know, uh, one of the things that I've always tried to do is not always just take the same school of playing or the same school of thought um, and um, instead get a really diverse mix of artists that play differently, that teach differently. Uh, and, um, and I think that that really helps people connect in, in a variety of different ways and stuff. So those would be the main things from my perspective. Uh, other things that you guys think that makes IET special? My iPad was being weird. Um, there we go. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I think one of the things off of, of what Adam said in your question, Jason, too, is just the variety of different of different things that we're doing. We're not just going to jump into Zoom with 100 people and sit in the same thing all day listening uh, and stuff like that is we're going to have a variety of, of different sort of platforms. You're going to be jumping into lessons, jumping into live Zoom sessions, jumping into Q&A sessions. Um, and basically doing all of these different things all around, you know, tuba and euphonium. Um, there's going to be so a social aspect to it as well, and time to socialize, not just with the artists, but I think equally importantly, like Andrew was saying, is with the participants um, and being able to socialize and make connections and catch up with with people that you may have seen and met briefly at another conference or at IET in the past, but also just meeting people from, you know, say you're a college student from different universities that are doing the same thing that you're doing, but halfway across the country or halfway across the world. And I think that um, the opportunity to have the socialization built into the festival, not just, hey, maybe you'll go talk to each other later, but having that kind of stuff built in is, is really important and having it built in in different ways. I know um, I can speak to something kind of interesting socially that I've noticed in uh, college courses that I've been teaching on Zoom for the past several weeks is that uh, I know some people are much more in person likely to jump up. Like Andrew said, you know, Adam struck up a conversation right with him right at the beginning. He was like, oh my goodness, I never thought this would happen. Um, but I know that there's some people that are very likely to go and talk in person. Some people are more likely uh, to talk on a video chat than they might be in person. They might be more comfortable to socialize in this environment. Likewise, they might be most comfortable to socialize via a text chat. So we're enabling, uh, which I've, I've noticed in my teaching that uh, there's people speaking up that didn't speak up in the past in person. So that actually provides a really unique opportunity with this being online for people to be socializing in a way for some that might be more comfortable um, to make these connections online than feeling uh, like there's less of a barrier in person. So they can just, it's easy to, to hide. I just do that. You can't see me anymore. So. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's can't, awesome. can't catch me. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, no. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I think that that's a, that's a great thing, the, the connection there. And uh, in my uh, years, 16 years of running IET, uh, in looking back at the history of the people um, uh, from uh, the first couple years that are successful professionals now, uh, but that there's different social groups that, you know, when you show up at ITEC or at Falcone uh, or uh, Liexa and Cheju, that there's people that you've you've met from IET before and stuff. And any that's that's sort of like a, a great thing. Um, uh, somebody asked, are we doing master classes? And yes, we are going to be doing master classes in the in the similar format. Um, one thing is about the schedule. Everything is a little shorter. Uh, we want to try and build in warm up warm up classes and the focus classes are going to be 45 minutes so that there's a 15 minute break. Uh, master classes will run for a solid hour from, you know, on the hour from 11 a.m. to 12. Um, and uh, but then there's a lunch break or a dinner break after those. Uh, but we've got a lot of breaks built in uh, so that you can get up and uh, and, and rest. Uh, I've been actually doing, uh, Mike and I, we've been talking and doing a lot of research on this thing called Zoom fatigue. Um, and, uh, and so I think that if you figure things out, uh, it, it can be, can be uh, quite comfortable. Uh, you know, I know um, one of the things I'm considering actually is, is getting my big screen TV, putting it on my studio wall up here, bringing a, a big recliner in and uh, be teaching sort of back like this. Yes, play that better. Um, no, no, that's a joke, just so you know. Um, but that there's, that there's a lot of different things of ways to do that. Uh, somebody that I talked with said, hey, you know, what I really want is uh, 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 airplay it onto my TV. I've got a Bluetooth keyboard so that I can uh, send in chat comments uh, and I can sit on my comfy couch. And I was like, I want to do that too. <laughs> so that's got me thinking. Um, 
And uh, the other thing I was telling people uh, that uh, before we started uh, that, you know, I've got all these instruments in here, uh, you know, from the, uh, let me just turn this around real quick here, from the, uh, from my uh, baritone horn to my Yamaha 842, there's a uh, 1942 uh, a Martin Double Bell Euphonium. I got the 1924 Khan up there, and I got my German tenor horn. So um, I'm thinking that I should do my evening recital, which we are going to have. Uh, they're going to be in unique formats from people's you know, basement or local church and different things like that. Um, but I was thinking that I should do a, a collage concert of all my different instruments. This way, I can uh, make sure that my wife doesn't bother me about why. Why do you have two double bell euphoniums? I'll be like, they sound different. I promise. And I'll play them both on the same recital at IET this year. So, yeah. So um, I know uh, one of our uh, one of uh, the artists, uh, Jason Casanova, wanted to make a, a quick statement about uh, things. So, Jason, why don't you go ahead? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Totally forgot about that. So, uh, so yeah, you know, one of the one of the reasons why I asked about like what makes this different from other festivals and what's, you know, I wanted to make sure everything that's going on still, uh, you know. I've been at IET both as a participant and now as an artist, um, you know, both for, oh, this is my 11th year already. Um, so it's, it's been, oh, wait, no, 12th year. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's crazy to think about, you know, um, and every year it, it, it gets better, you know, it gets better and better. Uh, I remember the first year that I came, I didn't think it could get better. And now here I am years later. And it, like I said, it just gets better every year, you know? And I remember one of the biggest uh, takeaways that I that I um, took away, obviously, um, was I remember coming to the festival the first year and being very scared. You know, I, I knew all of these great euphonium players were gonna be here. You Not had just hair the then too, just I so did you have, know. I did have hair. <laughs> I did have hair. <laughs> I had more hair and less weight, actually, I think. <laughs> um, but I remember being very nervous about, you know, not only the artists that were here, but the other great students uh, that were going to be here, you know, because I knew there was going to be students of Adams, students of Dr. Bowman, students of international students, you know, and whatnot. And um, I remember one of the great things about it, and I'm glad to hear that we're having the master classes still, was hearing all of these folks in the master classes and the recitals and everything, hearing all of these folks play and realizing like, wow, I, I think someone else said it too as well, that th these, are, these are people just like me, all of these other students, all of these artists, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm not too far off, maybe, you know, <laughs> I've just yeah. got to put in the work, you know, and, um, and man, that, that, that gave me a lot of drive, you know, to, uh, to keep on going and, and it gave me a lot of motivation and uh, I, I i just i would love for other people you know whether you're returning or new just to get a hold of that motivation too and i think versus all the other festivals and 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 camps whatever you want to call it that are going to be out there i think the iet festival is definitely one that's unique and just totally different from all the rest um and I would rather you not take my word for it, but I would rather you experience it for yourself. Even in this new format that we have, I, I think it's just gonna be phenomenal and I can't wait for everything that's coming up. So yeah, yeah. I was waiting for you to do a join me. And <laughs> no, join me. <laughs> yeah, so if you haven't seen the video that we put out uh, a little while ago, I think it was a, a, almost a week ago, um, that has some very funny clips of all the faculty. Uh, you should definitely check it out. I know it's on the IET festival page, but no, Jason, I appreciate that. And, and that's what we want is we want people to be, be able to have that level of connection and motivation and stuff. Um, and, uh, and that's one of the things when we, when we started it uh, many, many years ago. Uh, funny thing about that uh, was that the way I know what year IET is, is that it, I started at IET the year that I got married. 
uh, so that I always know what my anniversary is. So Janet and I, we celebrated our 16th anniversary this year, uh, but it's plus one, the 17th year of, of IET and stuff. Um, the other thing, if you guys are enthused and, and you're still watching, is that um, I saw that there was a cooking uh, mass uh, virtual class and stuff. So I didn't know if you guys are like interested. This is not going to turn out real well, but that's smoked pork. Those are ribeye steaks. Those are cooked ribeye steaks. And um, the uh, we could have a cooking class and a beverage class one evening, as a matter of fact. Um, so one more question was about the participant recital opportunity. Um, I want to have the participant recital opportunity, uh, and uh, we've talked about it. Um, I think, uh, you know what, since we're on, on, on the record here, I will make a decision that we are going to have a participant recital uh, and that we will have people upload videos. Uh, probably we'll need to have a, a deadline of either like the Tuesday or Wednesday of the festival, but hopefully before um, so that we can broadcast those on the Friday and the Saturday. I think one of the biggest things that I would like to say and implore people that are interested in, in coming is please go ahead and register soon. Um, you know, you guys realize I had a phase one uh, that we we added the, the new artist. I have a phase two and a phase three, believe it or not. And uh, that all this planning is so much dramatically easier if people get registered earlier uh, and we can get the virtual ensemble stuff out promptly uh, versus having to organize and manage this. Unlike a lot of festivals where it's just a viewing experience, you know, you basically, I mean, you can handle viewing experiences at any point in time. It's like, just show up, send me your money, and then log into the website. But IET is that this is so different. Uh, we have to figure out, typically, uh, we have to organize some music for everybody. We have to do part assignments. We have to figure out, you know, because otherwise everybody would just play the first part because you're all good enough, right? Um, especially for the Vitor Takata uh, Super F at the end. We found that out incorrectly a few times. Uh, if you've not been on a year five, 10, or 15, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, but every five years, uh, we do a version of the Vitor Takata, which is this very famous organ piece uh, that's just basically straight 16th notes. Just goes on and on for about four minutes, organ players going crazy and stuff like that. And at the end, it does this run up to a super F, I mean, super F up here. And uh, anyway, so I always tell people like, listen, if you can't handle the, the super F at the end, just leave it out and stuff like that, but invariably at least a couple people go for it. Um, it doesn't turn out well. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> the thing is that it, it takes us a lot of planning uh, and organizing with the scheduling of the private lessons, more than 200. Uh, I think we're on track right now to probably have almost 250, 275 lessons. Uh, and then with the master classes, you know, just to make sure that everything works and if you wait until the last minute, I mean, we're going to figure it out and do it. But man, it will make it so much easier for the staff and myself if we know what's happening uh, and we can go ahead and move on to through phase one, phase two, and potentially phase three as, as things go along. So, yeah. Um, anything else you guys want to, uh, to add? Okay. Well, I think this has been, uh, for me, it's actually been uh, exceptionally fun to do. I'm so excited just thinking about all the things coming to fruition that, that, that we've been planning and talking about uh, among the staff and some of the artists. Um, just, you know, uh, it's, it's going to be an amazing year, as it always is. And uh, I hope that you'll join me at the IET Festival. No, join me at the IET Festival. <laughs> no, join Bobby at the IET Festival. Uh, <laughs> which, which, there you go. Yeah. That's right. Go that way. Go that way. <laughs> yeah. Join us at the IET Festival. Uh, if you Andrew. have any other questions, please visit the, uh, the website uh, and feel free to send us an email at info at IETFestival.com. 
uh, and uh, also to, through the Facebook page. Uh, and tell your friends about it. I mean, this is a year to attend. Uh, registration is discounted. Our content is actually larger and more expansive. Uh, and uh, there's no travel cost, no dorm cost, no food cost. Uh, you don't have to worry about your, your tube or your phone even getting damaged by the airlines. Um, it's, it's a special, special year to be able to take part. <laughs> And if there's no nothing else, uh, we can uh, we can uh, sign off and hope to join you guys again in the near future. Okay, yeah. Um, so as always, go IIT Festival. Visit www.ietfestival.com for more information. And we'll 